Okay, good morning everyone. Um, well, it seems that 2020 was uh, going to give us one more challenge for the year. We apologize for the delay in the, in the webinar being able to start, but hopefully with the new link, everyone will be able to connect. So let's kick off, not to waste any more time. Um, this webinar, we're going to be talking about um, our clean exfoliation. Uh, just to introduce our speakers this morning, it's uh, we're going to have Dr. Liesl Kielder, our technical manager. My name is Lisa de Tassi de Clack. I'm a business development manager and my colleague uh, Tembi Sili Mashanini is also a business development manager and we will be taking you through the presentation this morning. So just a couple of house rules. All participants will be on mute. Um, please post any questions that you may have in the Q&A box. All the questions will be answered at the end of the presentation. We do have links to all the brochures and the videos and the webinars. They are available on our website in the Media Center. And obviously we'll be able to share a copy of the webinar uh, on request. You'll also be able to download it from the MS Teams folder if you have access. So just a quick introduction about Cerebel. Uh, those of you that have attended the previous webinars uh, will be familiar with our company, but just for those that may not have heard this, Cerebel was founded in 2001 in Johannesburg, uh, primarily as a manufacturer of wax-based raw materials for the personal care industry. We are a speciality focused company um, and we'd like to develop innovative, high performance ingredients uh, for specialist services. At the core of our values is the belief that our industry can be leveraged to positively impact our society. We focus a lot uh, this year, we focused a lot on sustainability and the many four pillars that we identified uh, in the previous seminars. And as an organization, we seek to catalyze and social transformation, economic upliftment, and sustainable development. Just a quick overview of the products and services. We have our waxes portfolio, which includes the FD synthetic wax, as well as the natural rice bran wax. We have the exfoliants. This is what we will be focusing on in today's webinar. And we have our speciality soft sphere ingredients, as well as our African botanical range. This year, we have covered three webinars uh, of, on the waxes, exfoliants, African botanicals, and soft spheres. Just a quick overview of our certifications. Um, our company is very proud of the regulatory compliance that we meet. We are the first company to receive EFCI GMP for cosmetics in Africa, one of only 73 companies globally. We are also certified ISO, China compliance, we have halal, GMO free, and most of our ingredients are biodegradable, vegan, preservative free, and some are also Cosmos approved. Just in terms of our distribution, um, Cerebel currently supplies 10 of the top 10 uh, global manufacturers. So we are approved globally and have distribution channels in many areas. I'm now going to hand over to Dr. Liesl Kilder just to take us through some of the trends that we will be looking at in this presentation. Good morning, everyone. Um, so I'll just be quickly discussing some of the, the global trends um, that we're currently seeing in the markets. And then afterwards, Timby will take us through the functional trends. So just quickly, uh, an overview of the global trends is like the global trend of clean beauty, sustainable sourcing, circular economy and upcycling, also safe ingredients, and I think very important transparency. Some of the functional trends we'll look at is aesthetic appeal, that whole spa at home idea, especially with lockdowns all over the world, hydration and moisturization, um, for this very important mild and gentle exfoliation, and of course the mask neat trend. So looking at the global trends, um, what I think is very important when we look at exfoliation is to be aware of the global legislature. Um, so you know that UNEP had the Clean Seas Initiative, 
um, where they are reducing single use plastic items. And they did this by banning any microplastics and microbeads that's being used in cosmetic products. I think what is very important is to understand what the definition of a microbead and microplastics are. So when we're talking about the size, it's less than five millimeters, but more importantly, it is about the, the material that is used to manufacture these microbeads and microplastics. So usually they are manufactured um, of materials from petroleum origin, so therefore it includes polyethylene, polypropylene and other polymers. And scientifically, a polymer is classified as anything that has a molecular weight ranging from 1,000 grams per mole to more than 10,000 grams per mole. So this is very important because the higher the molecular weight, the, the diff, more difficult it's going to be for that bead to biodegrade. And also the material is important because when it does biodegrade, it, you have to make sure that your, your chemicals that it biodegrades into is not harmful or toxic to the environment. So looking at some global trends, specifically speaking to clean beauty, um, at the NYSCC webinar, Jevedan asked consumers, what do you think clean beauty means? And these were like the top three answers, saying that it is something that is good for me, so it's not harmful to myself, so it's not toxic. It's good for others, so it's sustainable and it helps with economic upliftment. And then lastly, it's good for the environment. Again, coming down to it, no toxic um, substances being released into the into the environment. Then looking at clean beauty, there's also a lot of confusion around clean beauty. Um, a lot of people, and as you can see by this Mintel survey, actually felt that clean beauty meant that the product was natural, 58% of people. Um, 32 thought that clean beauty contains less harsh chemicals, and 28% said that it actually means that it is it's cruelty cruelty free. Um, so it's. I think there's a lot of confusion. I don't always think that people always understand what clean beauty is, and I also think it's it's different to a lot of people. But I think what is very important and what comes through in clean beauty is this whole transparency. I think people want to know where do my ingredients come from and what happens to them once they are released into the environment. Um, there's also the clean beauty trend is evolving. I think consumers are doing a lot more research. Um, there's also this vegan trend that is involving into understanding biotechnology. So a lot of lab grown products um, con in continue to enter the market and consumers are getting comfortable with natural products being manufactured in a lab. So um, another expert opinion was about natural versus synthetic. And I think especially with COVID-19, a lot of people have seen that it doesn't have to be natural, your ingredients, but as long as the ingredients are safe and reliable and with a better transparency and a better environmental footprint, longer shelf lives and touchless beauty will gain ground. So I think the COVID has, COVID has actually taught us that synthetic isn't always bad. Um, in cosmetics and toiletries, they were talking about clean beauty, where they're saying you're returning to basics. So again, this word transparency of the formulation, you want to know exactly what is inside your final product. Simplicity of the ingredients, not 500 ingredients on the inky listing, but only the ones that is really good for you and good for the environment. Also transparency of claims. It's not just about the transparency of the raw materials, but also what you are claiming on your final product. There's an eco consciousness, like what is happening to my product, what is happening, what is, what has happened to the environment to get this product, and then more importantly, safety. It's all about making sure that you are using safe ingredients, whether it's synthetic or whether it is natural. Um, one of the other global trends is where we're talking about this transparency, and there's this platform called Novi, and Cerebral is very proud to be uh, very proud to be part of this partnership with Novi. And Novi's whole idea is about transparency. It gives formulators transparency on their ingredients so that they exactly know what they are formulating with. Then again, we're coming back to to clean beauty being a very big global trend. Um, there's a lot of questions about it, like is is it clean? Is it healthy? Is your product non-toxic? Is it chemical free? Is it free of? Um, they're also talking about is it supposed to be all natural? And a lot of consumers are really realizing that some natural ingredients, for example, essential oils can be irritating. And I think clean beauty has also shown us that not all synthetics are bad. So this comes from Rona Burke, who's a, who's a writer for all these magazines like Vogue and InStyle and Elle. 
And she says, you, there's like, you have to look at this beauty checklist. You have to ask yourself these, these questions. Is your, where does your, does your beauty product perform? Does it contain healthy ingredients? Is the environmental impact low? Does it contribute in a socially responsible way? Does it satisfy economic requirements? Um, also, not just looking at the product, but the packaging and the labeling. And then, you know, do you ask yourself, does, does clean beauty comes with natural and organic or bio-based or is safe synthetics okay? So there's there's all this talk about, you know, just being clean and also safe ingredients in the market. A cosmetic business did this whole questionnaire where they, they, they actually asked consumers, how many of you are actually avoiding products that are harmful to the environment? Um, and as you can see in most of the countries, especially in Europe and in South America and North America, mostly 50% of people are actually avoiding products that they know that can be harmful to the environment. So it's very important that your product is sustainably sourced and that it contains safe ingredients. Then um, the brand Lolly has this whole thing about, you know, thinking a little bit outside of the box when it comes to your products, like, you know, I don't want my skincare routine to be part of human trafficking. So this is all about the social impact the product is having. And then specifically today, talking about exfoliants, you know, you don't, I don't want my scrub to be, to be polluting the oceans. And it's important to understand where does the, the scrub comes from and actually what happens to it once it is released into the environment. So next, Tembi will take over and she will talk a little bit more about the functional trends, specifically in the exfoliation market. Thank you, Liesl. Thank you, Lisa. Um, now we're going to look at functional trends. And as Liesl has nicely explained, explained with the global trends and how clean beauty, sustainability and transparency inform the functional trends that come out. Now, today we're looking at clean and natural exfoliating spheres. And with 2020, the most prominent um, trends when it comes to functional uh, products has been the aesthetic appeal. Uh, people need products that look pretty just to uplift their mood. Um, there is a huge trend at the spa at home because of the pandemic and the salons and the professional um, salons being so closed due to the pandemic. People are looking for products that they can use at home that help to nourish them, that help to repair and basically follow the trend of self-care beauty items. Hydration and moisturization has been at the forefront of the functional trends for 2020 with the increased use of alcohol-based products for sanitization, but also just the stress factors um, because of the times that we're in. People are finding that their skin needs more nourishment and more hydration. Of course, pertaining to what we're looking at in terms of exfoliating spheres, mild and gentle exfoliation is definitely at the forefront of what consumers are looking for. They're looking for exfoliation that doesn't damage their skin, but helps with the repair and the self-care treatments that they're actually currently using. Maskne, a new trend that came out this year, of course, due to the use of masks, where people have seen quite a lot of acne come around the area where the mask is at, and therefore looking for ingredients. So you still want to exfoliate your skin, but you need to ensure that you're not aggravating your acne. So if you're going to be exfoliating, you need to look at ingredients that are mild and gentle on the skin. Here we have a nice um, excerpt from Vogue um, and here they basically are looking at an interesting trend when it comes to exfoliation. Here they say 40% of regular skincare users in USA are slathering more products now more than a year ago and they see a huge increase in cleansers, in exfoliators and scrubs. This is obviously quite surprising, but when you actually look at the context of the year, what you're finding is that people actually are doing more at home treatments 
at home exfoliation and therefore there would obviously be a demand for ingredients that they can use at home on a practical level this makes sense um the the Incept continues to say by saying that mask wearing can trap sweat and bacteria on the skin and therefore exfoliating can help unclog those congested pores. So that means with an increase with exfoliation as brands and as suppliers, people are looking for something that is mild and that is actually gentle on the skin. Now talking about exfoliation specifically, the question then comes with such an increase in your exfoliation market and people using cleansing products at home, what do you consumers then use? Do you use spheres or do you use jagged edged exfoliants? Well, we've got an insert here from the Internet International Dermal Institute, where the Dermal um, Institute recommends that if you are going to use mechanical exfoliation, do not use fruit kernel shells or any similar compounds. This is due to the concern that jagged edged exfoliants like your fruit kernels or your shells can actually cause increased erythema, which is a decrease in the skin barrier function due to the jagged edge of the exfoliant. In the next um, slide here that we have, um, we have a blog that was written by Amanda McMillan, who is also a famous writer for various um, um, publications. Uh, she's a health and science writer, and she basically listed five exfoliation tips if you are going to exfoliate. One of those tips, which was tip number two, was to avoid irritating exfoliants. And she basically recommends that choose a scrub that uses gentle exfoliants. An example be synthetic microbeads, which Cerebel offers, or a chemical exfoliant such as lactic acid. So again, more information and more um, consumers and more writers realizing that if you are going to exfoliate, you need something more gentle like spheres or beads. Here, this is an excerpt that was taken quite a while ago, and this was a beauty blog, Pop Sugar, that actually did a quick blog as soon as um, Kylie Jenner's um, uh, skincare came out, where she had a scrub that was launched, which contained walnut scrubs within it. Um, and here the blog basically says that within minutes of announcing its new walnut scrub, uh, which was launched on May 22, social media went completely wild um, and they were in disarray over the exfoliating ingredient that was used in the product um, with comments from consumers saying enjoy the micro tears um, and some saying don't buy this product because it can mess up your skin um, but basically they enlisted um, the opinion of a dermatologist Kavita Mariwala who basically says walnut scribe Walnut scrubs are not good for the skin, but it's not the fact that it's walnuts. The issue is that the shells have jagged edging, so the shells can never be pulverized enough to make the round edges that are required for gentle and mild exfoliation. The hard walnut shells create small micro tears in the skin, which will ultimately alter your texture in a bad way. So what they are basically recommending is that if you are going to use mechanical exfoliation, use mild exfoliation by using spheres which don't contain rough edges. This was another blog that came out, a beauty blog, um, and here they, in, they quote Amanda von Hagen, um, who also says, Basically, the walnuts that are crushed down to powder or other forms of exfoliants that are actually crushed down to powder form can damage your skin and after time break down the skin barrier. And that is because the jagged edges cause micro tears in the skin. Walnut scrubs or any scrubs with nuts in are too abrasive and can have dire effects on your skin, such as making acne worse. 
Again, if we're going to look at the Moskny trend, um, we have to consider that if you're going to use exfoliation, again, here is recommendation that's saying do not use um, exfoliants that have jagged edging because it can actually aggravate the acne, making the acne worse and pitting and scarring of the skin. And so this is where Cerebral offers its exfoliation solution to these trends. Our exfoliants answer to the global and the functional trends. They answer the clean beauty question, the sustainability, circular economy. They are safe ingredients and of course we definitely vouch and sponsor for transparency. As Liesl has said, we are listed on the Novi platform, which is a platform that advocates for transparency in clean beauty and the personal care space. In terms of functional trends, our exfoliants can then actually answer to the at spa at home, nourishment, hydration, and um, my colleagues will actually go through some clinical data as well that speaks to hydration and moisturization. And of course, because of the gentle um, shape, uh, the spheres being completely round and spherical, it is the perfect exfoliation to use for even the mask me trend. Right, thank you so much, Tembi. We appreciate that um, valuable insight. It's always really interesting to see um, the new trends and the new studies and the blogs that are coming out. So thank you very much for sharing those insights with us. Uh, perhaps just to take you on a on a brief uh, journey through what our cerebral exfoliating spheres actually consist of. <clears throat> Okay, so we basically have two uh, ranges. We have Cira Wax and Cira Nat um, wax spheres. The first one, Cira Wax, is made from Fisher Tropes natural gas to liquid waxes. The important part to note about these part, this this range is that um, it is non-petroleum based. Uh, the process involves a catalyst distillation um, to, pr to produce the FD wax. There are therefore uh, no additives and no chemical uh, products added during the process, making it a very clean process. Um, and obviously because it comes from natural gas, the origin is uh, very clean, non-petroleum, there's no crude oil involved. So therefore uh, it is a very nice alternative to any petroleum based uh, waxes. <clears throat> the second range of uh, exfoliating spheres can be made from uh, natural rice bran wax. Uh, we have quite enjoying the development of this range. We're seeing a lot of traction in many different regions. Uh, this is due to a number of facts, especially speaking to the trends that Tim Basilia and Liesl has have spoken to. Um, the source of the Serenet rice bran wax is the husks of the rice, which basically is a uh, waste product, which speaks also to the upcycling and circular economy trends. So this is a product that we that we are using the, the waste product. This is then ground um, down, cold pressed to, to form an oil. The oil is then um, processed using ethanol and crude rice bran wax is therefore extracted, um, also with activated charcoal or clay. And once the, the refined rice bran wax uh, is available, this is melted, filtered, um, and then pastillated and sorted in our plant, in our factory, to produce the rice bran wax, which is what we use as the source material for the exfoliating spheres. The nice thing about this product is that it also speaks to the natural trends, um, and it also speaks to the, the environmentally friendly, sustainable, trends uh, because of the circular economy nature of the product. This product actually was nominated this year for In Cosmetics Global as the Green Ingredient Award um, and we were quite proud about this achievement because it's, it's, a, it's a, a product that we are quite excited about going forward into the future. 
So I think now let's give Liesl a chance to take us through some clinical data just to have a look at the um, supporting data for this, these ranges. Thank you, Lisa. Um, so as Tenby has mentioned, there's a lot about this talk about the spheres versus the jagged edge exfoliants. Um, and we also felt like, you know, it's all good to talk about it, but it's always good to have it backed by some technical data. So if you look at this first, there's a, a SEM image photograph on the left hand side that is about the cellulose particles, which is also quite popular as exfoliants. As you can see, all of these particles are not spherical. Um, they're all like a fibrillous kind of a, a feel and look to them. And there's also an example of a polyethylene, which is also, it's relatively round, but it's still not perfectly spherical. Even if you look at silica, which is quite popular, still some round particles, but you can see it's not perfectly spherical and they definitely have some jagged edge, edges. If you look at the microscope photograph on the right-hand side of the apricot kernel exfoliation product, you can see the jagged edges on the exfoliant. So then we look at our cerebral spheres, which is both our cerewax wax and our serenat spheres. And under the microscope, you can see that these spheres are perfectly round. Um, they are no jagged edges visible and they are perfectly spherical. Um, and you can compare them to the right hand side where the jagged edge exfoliants, um, as we just like put them down for a comparison. So if you're looking at clean and mild exfoliation, the cerebral spheres will definitely be recommended, specifically when you're working with your face. Um, the face has got a much, um, much, it needs much more gentle exfoliation, and therefore the cerebral spheres are perfect because they will cause no micro tears because there's no jagged edges present on these spheres. Then of course it's almost it's always good to know what is the user satisfaction when using these spheres. So as soon as the um, the polyethylene bead band came out. There was a university in Thailand that did a, a exfoliating efficacy of biodegradable bead study. Um, so we had nothing to do with the study. However, they did use our Surawax spheres um, in the gel scrub, which is the one to the far right that says gel scrub with wax beads. So in this, they compared the the, the user experience with the skin hydration. And as you can see, by using different gel scrubs with different beads, the polyethylene, manin beads, and the wax beads, the wax beads had the best skin hydration when it came to the user satisfaction with 32.97%. Then they also looked at the, at the, skin, at the skin hydration um, or the loss or the gain in skin hydration. And as you can see, um, with a gel scrub with wax bead was also the biggest um, increase in skin hydration. So this is just a confirmation from the from the users that actually using the the Cerawax spheres has got a very good user satisfaction. Of course, it's very important with the bead ban to make sure that um, you know we do not we, we are not part of the bead ban. So first of all, Cerawax spheres are not a polymer, so they're not considered to be a microplastic. Also, Cerawax and Cerenat products are biodegradable. Um, we have biodegradability analysis on the Cero waxes is the top one, so we would consider this to be inherently biodegradable. Whereas if you look at the microplastics and the microbeads, um, they will show no degradation for up to a year. Um, then also for people that want to be more natural, we have the rice bran wax spheres, which is readily biodegradable, showing more than 60% biodegradation after 28 days. So just some benefits of using these Cerawax and Cerenat spheres. So as we mentioned, they're perfectly in, um, spherical and therefore where they will cause no micro tears. Um, it's also nice to know that they are available in various cut sizes. So um, we usually have the 150 to 1180 that we offer them in. Um, it's also very nice that you can color these waxes. So when we go back to the trend of aesthetic appeal, um, it's quite nice to use these um, wax spheres in a product and we offer them in standard colors, but we also have custom colors available. Um, we also make sure that we use pigments that do not leach into the formulation and we um, usually ask the customer for a little bit information so that we can make sure that we use the right pigment. They are hypoallergenic. Um, specifically FT wax is chemically inert, so they won't react with anything inside your formulation. You can use both these waxes in a wide range of pH, so it doesn't matter what kind of product you use. 
All of them are preservative free, preservative free, and we also um, can proudly say that all of them are non-irritants to the skin. So now Tembi will discuss with you our other option that is more of a chemical exfoliation. Thank you, Lisa. Um, so in terms of exfoliation, we need to always be aware that there is mechanical exfoliation, which we have gone through, but many people are also looking at chemical exfoliation. Here we're introducing to you a concept for a new way to touch on the aesthetic appeal of your formulation by introducing a bit of color, a little bit of fun, but still introducing chemical exfoliation using our soft sphere encapsulation technology. Now, our soft sphere encapsulation technology is quite well known in the market. Um, in fact, our first webinar touches on exactly what it is and how it actually works. So I would recommend that please for more info, if you need more information on exactly this uh, technology, um, you can either go on the link that we've provided within the presentation, which we, the presentation we will share um, and distribute accordingly, or feel free to visit our website and visit the media center page where we have more information and um, a video of the first webinar where we go into detail on this technology. But briefly looking at this technology, our soft sphere wax matrix offers the benefits of moisturizing FT wax or rice bran wax, in addition to encapsulated actives. Um, what this technology is, is that it's a wax matrix and we distribute and um, encapsulate actives and it can be various actives but in this case we have the option of encapsulating chemical exfoliants so going quickly through the benefits moisturizing wax matrix encapsulation technology um, and as you can see on the right there's a little sphere pink with a little bit of white dots that's almost that's a visual representation of what the encapsulation particle looks like um, this technology offers a unique delivery system for active ingredients, example, the AHAs. Actives that are stable at 80% can easily be encapsulated and dispersed. And because of the properties of the wax are protected within the hard wax spheres, uh, because these spheres come to you as hard spheres, but they self hydrate or soften if it is an oil soft sphere after 24 to 48 hours in formulation. This is a nice way to introduce some unique aesthetic appeal to your end products uh, because they come in various um, colors available in full color spectrum. And of course, you're providing a different type of texture and user experience for your consumers. Here we're going to actually play a video of our soft spheres. Uh, please note there is no sound to the video, but I think the video is quite informative enough, so please enjoy. Okay, for more of this video, please visit the website under Media Center page and you will find that 
the video actually has quite a nice sound. Um, but this actually encaptures what exactly you can put in the soft sphere and the different types of actives found. But in terms of the AHAs, which is chemical exfoliation, which is becoming more and more popular, um, as a concept, we're happy to say that citric acid, uh, which is found from citrus fruits, glycolic acid from sugarcane and other flora such as pineapple, um, lactic acid from lactose or other carbohydrates, malic acid and tartaric acid are some chemical exfoliants that can be encapsulated using the soft sphere technology. And again, here we're appealing to the aesthetic trend where people want a little bit of color and a little bit of texture and something interesting and a user experience, something different, but still the functional benefit of gentle exfoliation. Now, I I'm introducing my colleague, Liesl Beck, who will actually go through some prototype formulations that we have, um, which is just an idea following the trends, the functional trends that we spoke about earlier. Thank you, Tembi. Um, so I will just quickly show you some prototype formulation. Um, I always find this helps a bit just to see how you can use our products in different in different prototypes. Um, so first of all, if you're looking for a mild exfoliation cream cleanser, um, there's also all sorts of other products from Cerebar that you can also add into your cream cleanser, like for instance, the, the Serenac Extract Balbean, which is very hydrating and moisturizing. Um, we also have our cream base, which we call Cerebase LB55, which is um, polysorbate free and um, silicone free. We've also added some of our Kalahari melon seed oil, which is very good for face and nice and moisturizing and hydrating. And then here you can see we chose to go with the Surinat rice bran spheres um, for that mild exfoliation um, on the skin and getting rid of the dead skin cells. Another option is to combine the, 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 the exfoliating spheres with the soft spheres in what we'd like to call our strawberry smoothie detox face mask. So we made a pink cream, um, again using the, the syrup base and the balbean, which is very moisturizing. And then you can add the, the exfoliation spheres, um, which is the Surinat rice bran spheres. And then you add these black little soft spheres in there, which will give you the idea of a strawberry um, with charcoal powder inside. And this then will help with detoxing of the skin while you are actually busy exfoliating your skin. Another um, good thing to know about our spheres is that they are stable at quite high temperatures. So you can actually make an exfoliating soap bar, which again can be used for face, or you can actually use it as a body bar to exfoliate your skin and exfoliate your body by incorporating our Cero Wax spheres. Here we had a variety of colors. This is the synthetic wax with various pigments, and we also used our synthetic wax inside the soap bar. Um, another example of more of the chemical um, exfoliating cream is the hydrating sweet flora exfoliating cream. Um, again, we use the Cerowax blend to use it as the base of the cream and then the marula to give you that rich um, aftercare of the after you've exfoliated. And then we added some Cerowax soft spheres that's got some glycolic acid in it, which will then be released onto the skin and give you that mild exfoliating um, feeling of, of the face. So that was just a, um, a quick overview of how you can use the exfoliants in different prototypes. Please feel free to reach out either to us or our various distributors on more suggestions and more prototype formulations. I will now hand over to Lisa who will go through some of the Q&A questions. Please feel free to post your questions in the Q&A box now and we will be happily answering all of them. Thank you, ladies. Um, well, I hope you've all enjoyed this, this morning's webinar with us. Um, please feel free, as Liesl said, to, to put the, the, your questions in the Q&A box. Um, we will discuss them as they come through.
So looking at the first question that's come through, asking what is the natural origin percentage of the Cirawax and Cironat exfoliants? Um, our Cirawax is synthetic. Uh, it comes from natural gas. Um, however, the Cironat rice bran is 100% natural. OK, the second question, what is the original color of the Serenet rice bran wax and can it be supplied in brown? Um, so the original color of our Serenet wax, um, the rice bran wax is like a creamy color and this is because it gets filtered um, and colored with a with an activated clay. Um, there is an unrefined version which is quite brown. However, the oil content of that wax is very, very high. So we would rather say that if you want to have a brown rice bran wax exfoliant, we would rather take our creamy one and add uh, maybe an iron oxide to it to make it brown. Okay, the next question is, are the spheres approved um, in China? Yes, they are. And also regarding the vegan status, yes, they are vegan and we can provide a statement uh, to, that, to that end. OK, so the next question, do soft spheres offer mechanical exfoliation? No, uh, this is because once they're in formulation, they are soft and rupture easily once applied to the skin. Once pressure is applied, they burst, releasing the chemical AHA that you may have encapsulated onto the skin. Uh, so in this case, you can combine, you could put soft spheres and some uh, exfoliating wax spheres into the same the same formulation should you choose to. OK, the next question, which cut size of spheres is applicable for body, lip, hand, face and foot care? We have cut sizes uh, for all of these applications. Obviously, we recommend the small, smaller cut sizes for the facial applications and lip applications. Obviously, the medium to coarser cut sizes for foot care and body. Um, if you're interested in the exact cut sizes, they uh, have been posted recently on our LinkedIn page under the Frequently Asked Questions post. We also, you're welcome to have a look at our website. Um, in the brochure, this breaks down the cut sizes there. Alternatively, you can contact uh, your, your distributor or us directly and we can send the actual TDSs and um, data sheets for any specific questions or applications you may have. OK, the next question, troubleshooting if the sphere colors leach into the products. Um, this is something we've done quite significant development work over this past year. 
Uh, we have an applications lab available and you are welcome to contact us and we were happy to run some trials and to assist you with troubleshooting. Uh, what we have found is that the majority of our colors are now stable. Uh, the one color we had some issues with was with a blue um, at very low pHs. However, we have recently um, discovered a new blue pigment that is acid stable, so as low as a pH two or three. So if, there, if you are having some issues with color stability, uh, please contact us. We've done a lot of work in, in making sure that our, sta that our colors are stable um, and possibly have some, some experience in which we can help you to solve these issues. Okay, the next question, what is the heat stability of the spheres? Uh, our FD wax spheres are stable at 100 degrees Celsius and our FD and our rice bran wax at about 70 to 75 degrees. Again, please have a look at the, the most recent uh, LinkedIn post um, because there is a frequently asked questions. There are actually two posts uh, with some questions that will also might be of interest to you. OK, we're just running a quick test. Uh, one of our um, attendees has said that they're just hearing beeping. Um, OK, so for, from the rest, if there's anybody that cannot hear us, please let us know. Uh, alternatively, we will just continue. OK, the next question, um, uh, can we use the exfoliating spheres in powder for formulations? Yes, they work very well in powder formulations. Again, another question regarding pH stability, um, easily 2 to 12. Uh, the next question is, is the percentage of nationality based on the ISO standard? Um, and it would be interesting to um, get the Surawax studied under that because of the um, from natural gas. Um, and yes, it is very interesting. We are we are still in a debate with ISO um, because there is some people that saying, yes, it's natural gas, so it is renewable carbon, carbon so you can actually classify it as being natural. Um, other people are saying no, it's not. So, so for us just to be safe, we rather call it a synthetic. Um, but yes, we definitely are in discussion with ISO um, because we also do feel it is natural gas, so it should be renewable carbon. Just a question regarding available colors. Uh, we have about six, seven standard colors uh, available, but absolutely, if you would like a bespoke color, then we are happy to develop that for you. Okay, just a question about presentations and recordings being shared. Yes, of course, and as we mentioned, they will also be available 
on our website, on our media page. You can download all the previous webinars, videos, um, and, and brochures from the website, as well as on the MS Teams platform if you have access to that. Uh, the next question was if there's a range of hardness for the spheres. Um, unfortunately not, they are all wax spheres. So whatever the hardness of the wax is, that will be the, the hardness of the sphere um, across the board. Okay, we have a question here of what is the marketing story behind the rice bran wax and where's the rice bran has collected from? Um, yes, our rice bran wax is Cosmos approved and is sustainably sourced. Um, the sources um, originate um, from Asia. Uh, so another question was what suspension agent can be used for the softwares? Uh, usually just a rheology modifier, like something like a carbomer or your polyacrylates. They work quite well to, to suspend the, the spheres. Um, if you have any problems or issues in your formulation, again, you are very welcome to contact our application lab. They will quite happily work with you to find the right suspending agent. OK, so I think we, we've run a little over time, uh, so we're going to call an end and close off the webinar. Um, please, I did see that there were extra questions still coming in. We are available for the rest of today to answer those questions for you. So please contact your um, distributor or your business development manager uh, for more information or to answer any questions that you might still have. Um, and thank you so much for joining us. We're wishing you uh, a wonderful rest of the day. And um, yeah, we're looking forward to engaging you further next year with more information and another webinar in the series. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Bye.